Yeesh. This is, um, this is going to take a good bit. What is this? Ooh, okay. So, got this in the mail from a client. I have no idea what kind of crazy stuff happened to this. But, um, yeah. So, we're gonna, I would normally do a normal spray session with this at the request of the client. He asked for, um, he asked for this to be turned into something completely different, which is not a bad thing. Um, wow. But we have a lot of work ahead of us. That is generally, so, okay, so just FYI, folks, if you guys get stuff from clients that you have no idea what's happening, which never normally happens except for a few clients that I don't correspond with online, they just send me stuff. So when you ask for repaints, it is a really, really good idea to ask your clients for pictures so that you know what you're getting into. Um, this would normally be a single bill in itself for me for prep work and cleaning. Um, there's really sticky, gummy substance all over this, unfortunately, beautiful pre-wrap wiggle wart. Um, I have no idea what kind of paint, so this is not something that I can just reprime and paint because there's, there's greasy, gooey, residue -y type stuff on it. Um, that's really thick and real nasty. So this is going to take a lot of work. I'm going to do that work. I'm not going to do it on camera because it would take forever. Um, but we are going to do the work on camera once it's completely stripped. You're going to ask what I'm going to use to strip it with. I'm going to start out with Goo Gone because um, that usually takes a lot of junk and stuff off of there. Yeah, see, I don't, what is that? What is that? Ooh, that's better than gold. One hour later. I am now at the point where I will tape this little strip because orange it looks as though was the original color in some fashion on this particular bait. Um, I can go ahead and prime this bait. Yeah, there's a little bit of residual. It's only paint and it is completely clean. It's dry. There's no oily goo gone residue on here. Um, I, I gave it a quick wipe down with just some soap and water, let it dry. We're good to go. I'm going to tape this little piece right here to show it's an original wiggle wart, a pre-wrap. And everything else on this bait is going to be brand new, except for this little strip. And 
I've got that strip of tape down on this. And we're just going to finish the UPS guy. He's not going to stop barking. He's been barking since the UPS guy was here. And that was about 15 minutes ago. He gets himself very worked up. That's what Yorkie Poos do. They get worked up. Dear Santa. Finally, if you're willing to, I would love to see you do a start to finish video with a wiggle wart. The black fluorescent in particular. Let's turn it into a spring molt craw. That would be so epic. It's a challenge for sure. <laughs> yes, it was. Um, that being said, the most tactful way I can put it, 99 times out of 100, I'm dealing with clients that are online. They understand what my breakdown in prep price is versus just if they're going to get something re-epoxied or resealed. Uh, if I'm going to do a spray and a seal or if they want extra layers of seal, like that's that's all to be done in a special order. Um, having said that, on occasion I have clients that I like very much, but this, like this came out of the blue. But on something like this, this took an hour of prep work and that's a lot of work when you're doing like the next bait uh, run that I have set up uh, is for another client and that's part of like, um, I think that's like a 20 piece order and 11 of them are wiggle wart repaints. So, or wiggle wart paints, custom paint. So, again, I'm doing multiple things a day, and if I don't know what's coming, I can't really take the time to say, okay, on this day, I'm going to be doing a run of, of prep work for this. And, in addition, you should be charging your clients, if there's a lot of work, you should be charging your clients more, because you should be paid for the labor that you put into the effort, um, as long as you're turning over a professional looking bait, which this is going to be when we're finished. So. This is going to be a cool spring molt crawl, and let's get started. The next day. It's sort of a, an olive drab, olive color, if you will. Um, it's made of leaf green, wicked apple green, medium gray, and just a hint of burnt orange, which is not orange. I know I say that all the time. It's a warmer color of brown, but it's a it's like a medium to dark brown. So the proportions, if you're going to look at percentage-wise of what makes it up, it's 80% leaf green. To that, I add a few drops at a time, just mixing it down until it looks good. All apple green. So you mix the leaf with the apple first, and that's your 100%. And then you just add in drops of gray and drops of brown until you get the desired effect that you're looking for. And what happens is it kind of comes out this color. You guys see that? So it's a really good craw color. And the reason that I went through all that is to explain that on this spring molt craw, now that we have our, it's the next day by the way, it is the next morning. So pretty much we have a solid coat of white primer, which was the, just the Createx Opaque. And to that, to the top of this, we're going to be adding a nice little layer of this green mixture, which is pretty much, I would say, an olive. I'll let that get all happy. Now, it can, it can look a little bit splatter because the craw texture has that raised dimensional effect on it. So again, nothing in, in life, at least from the human element, is perfect. Um, nature gets a little bit closer in patterns, but again, it's not perfect. So you just want a good coating on this. And to this, to the edges on the bill, on the back end and just probably a couple of random, we're going to reduce our pressure from 20 down to about 10 to 15. I'm going to add in a little bit of Maui blue detailing and blend that while this is still wet. I also had to charge GoPro batteries overnight. A lot of you may be asking what I use to film. I use three things um, depending on what kind of filming I'm doing. I'm doing a speed shoot where there's music behind it. You're probably going to see most of the footage on an iPhone and on the Nikon. If I am doing first person, like a POV shot, which is this one, uh, a lot of it is the GoPro, and then I'll kind of throw in some other shots 
on uh, on the iPhone. And one of the things, especially for spraying, nine times out of ten, I probably won't bring the Nikon out when I'm right up on the bait like this, simply because the Nikon lenses are much more expensive than this GoPro lens. So that's what I shoot with. Um, this is I take the I've got a Hero Seven that I use on the water. And then I use the Hero 4, which is old, but it's, it's a solid unit. Um, it's got the right plugins for a microphone. You can get a microphone for it, which is not ridiculously expensive. Um, and the, and the, it doesn't fisheye on you like some of them do on a narrow view, which is what we use here inside. So I just, I like the old Hero 4. That's what we're using this morning and for most of these. So now you can see we have on the back end of this that beautiful, beautiful blue color. And if you look at the craw image that is referenced, you'll see that that is a heavy translation there as well. Now, most of the time, on, if you guys follow what I do online, on the website and on Facebook, you see that I use a lot of different techniques to put on the craw segments on this particular one. I'm going to be using the Detail Black Magenta and not Jet Black itself only because it's going to give this craw a more natural look, which I really like. Um, on this particular one though, I'm going to do a little bit of splattering with white to represent those bumps just in a couple of places because we're also going to employ a couple of stencils on this as well. And then before we get started on that, I need to do some orange on the belly of this craw as well. So I'm going to change my, as a matter of fact, let me get a little bit, a little bit of this Maui blue just to kind of represent the sides and matching the front and the bottom. Still working at around 10 to 15. I'm just going to lay in a little bit of it's a, this is a sunburst fluorescent, which is a little bit lighter than the actual fluorescent orange. Um, I wanted to kind of be a little bit more subtle in presenting this spring molt craw. And I also wanted to leave in just a little bit of white. I'm going to get this a little bit thicker around the bottom layer here, around this edge of the bill. And that's all the orange we're going to put on this. That's it. There are a couple of ways that you could achieve splattering. You can flick, you can take a detail brush and dot it. You can use the end of this. If you take this little end piece if you have this if you have this uh, particular airbrush or usually I think a wad is in general the end of this comes off and you can really reduce pressure add a little bit of a thin white and just kind of flick spray I'm a paint flicker it's always worked well for me don't need more than a couple of drops of this. This is the Jacquard White. It's a little bit thinner than Createx. So the splatter pattern is, I like it better, to be honest. And we don't want to go crazy on this because we are going to be using some stencils as well. And you'll notice that anything else that I have going on over here with all these wiggle warts is off to the side. Um, that's just primered up. So if I get a little bit, usually if I'm careful, I'm not going to get a whole bunch. So we're just kind of, this is like a stippling technique. Just a little flick. It's not that difficult. Just don't overload your paintbrush. A little goes a long way. And for this, as a reminder, because it's been a while since I've talked about this. Um, been quite a few videos, I think, since I've demonstrated it. It's a real easy technique. Don't overload and then flick the excess off. Make sure you have a good flow coming out of the top of the brush before you 
throw it onto your lure. Small dots are the best. They look the most natural, at least they do to me. You might have a different preference. And just continue until you have an adequate amount. You don't want to, again, you don't want to overdo it because you don't want to lose that natural look of this. I'm going to add just a little bit to the underside, not a bunch. And that's it. Next color up is a detail black magenta. And this is going to be all of our accenting colors. Except for the eyes. The eyes are going to be a pure black on this one. Maybe with a little bit white, like the Q-tip dot on it when I'm done. But we're going to start here. And I'm going to do the top first. Now one thing that I'm not going to be traditional on a lot of this is how I'm making my crawl markings on this particular bait. I'm going to start out with what I normally use, which is a hand cut stencil, but then I'm going to go into the non hand cut stencils. So always put the collar on the bait and for that I have, let's see if we can get a, a good view of this for you guys. That'll do. You can see I've notched this in a couple of places and that also helps to give it a little bit more of a natural look. This goes on very light. You just want to make sure that you have enough airflow coming out of this paintbrush so that you can achieve what you're going for. And there is your collar. There are only going to be two segments on this particular crawl. There's one. Here comes the second. And then you'll notice that the paint's starting to load up here. This is why I like paper towels, folks. It absorbs it, doesn't smear it, and you know you get all that paint off so that it's pretty much dry to the touch. Now, here's where it gets non-traditional. There are a couple of pieces that I've just by accident kind of found out along the way that really look like a craw arm. So what I'll do is lay that on. Just like that. You guys see that? It also gives it a raised or three-dimensional appearance. And then you want to do the same thing on the other side. Kind of want to make sure that's dry. Get any excess off your fingertips. I always wear a glove on the hand that's going to get abused the hardest with paint. And then we're going to bring the same technique. Let me see if I can get a... a no, I'm, I'm trying to keep you guys out of the shadows. That might do it. And then just do the same thing on the other side. Now you have that crawl arm appearance. We can set this back off to the side. Also, before we do that, just a couple of little indentation to give this a little bit more texture on that top. Now we need to bring our hand cut back into it. You lay this down a little bit better. Get it over on its side so you guys can see. There you go. Sorry if that made a bad noise. My apologies. Now with this, you got to remember that you're working on the bill as well. The bill's not taped off, so you have to be a little bit more conscious of where your spray comes out. And now you've created that collar. And we can go into this next segment. 
continue that line and one of the reasons that I do what I do and put it on the back first I know I've mentioned this in probably every other crawl video I've ever done is to get that line up better once you have that on the back you can see where you need to line this segment up a whole lot easier at least I can and then that little tail piece right there ta-da go back to the other side the same way make sure you guys are in frame with me this morning the other GoPro tip if you guys are filming with GoPro on your chest this is the chesty um, I found that I like the chesty better than on my head because my head has a tendency to move a lot more than my body does so a little bit easier and uh, probably makes you guys have vertigo a little bit less when I use something like this keep that in and then just see the line, line up the line. Always hit the edge of your stencil so that the overspray is what's coming off that bait. Dab off the excess. little back piece and voila you've got the sides and we're going to go back to this and just add a couple of interesting layers of depth to really give it that lifelike appearance so that when you're looking at this looks a lot more like something that you would see in the river a little bit of shading and that's again that's why I go back to this black magenta because it's not as contrasty <coughs> excuse me as the uh, the black is that jet black has a lot of contrast in it and it does not look as natural one of the things that I, I, I kind of pride myself on is out of the box thinking for how to achieve the same goal with a different unique look I like different approaches to a plane like a lot of times I'll just put these lines down because it's a straight line but I also like to do something that's a little different so if you guys can see this little tip we're going to use this little area right here as the belly segment and it looks completely unique and it, it gives this bait really a whole different look how about that something completely different um, and it doesn't take long just look at the look at your what you have around you and it doesn't even have to be a purchase stencil like this art tool this is from an art tool FX mini um, that I've just cut into like a million different segments but that is something completely unique and we're gonna go back to that little tiny segment that I showed you here and mirror image the top to the bottom so that it kinda looks the same on that craw arm and you'll also notice I keep getting this I'm throwing this weird shadow because for some reason now and I don't think that I've no maybe I just haven't noticed it um, I'm getting shadows and it's, it's time for some upgrades and lighting but that'll certainly come after the lockdown is over because right now it's just necessity and family so there we have it this is what I've got going on let me bring this up into the light here this is how we have the bottom of the bait now and it's something completely unique 
and it's just a little bit different only because I, I think a little bit out of the box. Maybe it's nuts, um, but I like finding things that I can utilize to give it a different look and, and I, I encourage all of you guys to do that as well. I like using just one helping hands if I'm doing a wiggle wart. I don't want to put two wiggle warts on here because generally nine times out of ten my client is going to ask me to do the bill as well because that's traditionally how wiggle warts are done. It is not a phenomenon. These things are great. They're unruly beasts. You can find one in twenty that probably is tuned amazingly well but when you find that one in twenty that's tuned amazingly well it's really going to work for you and it hunts like no other bait out there on the market. The real gems are these pre-wrap wiggle warts. We're going to do something a little bit different with the eyes on this. I am going to do a white eye and then I'm going to dot this orange on this particular malt craw. I think. I'm going to I'm going to ponder on that just for a second. We'll figure it out together. I added just a little like two drops of opaque white back into this. And I'm going to hand spray these eyes, at least the base layer. I'm not going to go overboard. My pressure right now is spraying around 10. That's all it is. And we're just going to go from one eye to the other. Make sure we don't spray any splatter. And just gently guide that trigger back. Getting a quick heat set on the eyes. I'm going to pull out this sunset red. I'm going to add just a few drops. Always get the gunk off the edges. I'm going to add just a couple of drops. A little goes a long way on this as well. I'm going to roll this Q-tip through it. I'm not going to put a whole lot of pressure down on the paper because I just want to kind of saturate this now that we have our eyes dry. Just going to make a little indentation on this. Always put my, my pinky, let me see if I can get you guys in frame here. Always put my pinky down to brace and then we're going to add a little bit more than that. One side. Two sides. And there you have it. I'm coming down the home stretch on this bait with you guys. A couple things left to do. Number one, let's sign the bait. And we're going to heat set it once we sign it. Angle your pen. Angling always helps. Always helps. It helps what, what angling your pen does when you're not coming straight down at it. Um, it helps get that rollerball started. If you're using a rollerball, I'd strongly recommend using something that's light fast, waterproof, this is a Uniball Vision Elite. We'll put the year on here. There you go. Heat setting this so it doesn't smear while it's still wet. And then we're going to take a little exacto knife. We're going to take a little exacto knife and we need to pull this wiggle wart tape up. Remember at the beginning I showed you where it, uh, all the pre-wraps say it on the bill. So we just need to pull that up and as you pull it you don't want to continue it forward because if you have any paint whatsoever that's still tacky so when you get it to the end here pull it back towards you, right back towards you. And that keeps, if there's any tacky paint, that keeps it from ripping off the edge of the lure. 
because I've made that mistake before too and it's a pain in the butt to go back and correct. It can be corrected, but why do double work if you don't have to? So now we have that beautiful wiggle wart reveal that yes, you're an original and we have repainted you and you saw what we started out with. We're going to get this paper clip going underneath. Paper clips on original wiggle wart seem to be the only thing that's thin enough or uh, Christmas ornament hangers. Those work really well too. Um, thin enough to slide under this lip eyelet. And then I bring my needle nose in, crimp that down, try and get it tight, but you don't want to smash that because I'm sure my client has already tuned this bait. You also want to keep that in mind too. If you're getting stuff for repaints, it's because your client already is using this more than likely, especially with tournament fishers, anglers, fishermen, fisher ladies. So you really don't want to mess up how they have the bait tuned. Ever, ever. Like never. Don't do it. Now here we go. We're going to dip it. I'm going to put you over. Sorry if I'm moving you a little bit. We're going to dip it completely. We're going to pull this back out. Slowly. The slower you go, the less bubbles you're going to have. And on the new formula, I didn't notice any bubbles at all. I cannot wait till they release it. I asked for an update the other day. They said probably within the next month or so, but that was before all heck broke loose. Now you see that I've inserted this. Here's the key. Some wiggle warts are different than others. This one has an eyelet that's pretty good at the bottom, but a lot of them are sitting up a little bit higher. What I do is I'll set a little egg timer or the timer on my phone and I set that for about 10 to 15 minutes and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to remove this once everything has stopped, gravity has stopped taking its charge of things. I'm going to remove this after it stopped dripping. But after also it's, it's not going to pool anymore. So you want it tacky, you don't want it dripping, you don't want it dried because what will happen is that it will get stuck on there and that's a nightmare to take off too. So that is my solution. I'm just going to carry this over. It's like that Spongebob voice 15 minutes later. Still have my glove on. We're just going to gently pull this out. I'm going to touch the bottom of this briefly just to pull anything that may have been holding there away from that bait. Just a little bit. Most of it has dripped away. That's in the trash. The glove now in the trash. So this is about the long and short of it folks. I hope that I was able to teach you guys a couple of new things today. I hope that I was able to better define how to remove a drip wire from this wiggle wart which is key if you don't want pooling or you don't want that drip wire to be stuck if you're going to be hanging a bait to dry like this. Um, if you're using KBS um, I believe probably a similar process happens at a much faster pace with Illumilite. If you're using UV coating um, almost worthy of brushing that on if you're doing that. Maybe not just hang and dip. You might want to brush it on. But again, I'm not, a, I'm not a UV user. If you guys are, let me know what you guys do for wiggle warts because I'm sure that there's a lot of really fantastic wiggle wart painters out there. I am not the only one. I just like spreading the love and teaching you guys what I know. I hope I was able to do that today. We'll see you on the next video. Cheers. Happy casting from Jekyll Bates.